Once upon a time, in Central Africa, there was a flourishing kingdom known as Luba. It existed from the 15th to the 19th century CE and was the first kingdom in the Congo Basin. The people of Luba were skilled in ironworking and trade, particularly along the Lualaba River, where they worked with metals like copper. These skills allowed the Luba elite to establish a powerful kingdom that expanded from the Upemba Depression in what is now Southern Democratic Republic of the Congo. The story of the Kingdom of Luba began around 1300 CE in the southern rainforests of the Shaba region in Central Africa. The kingdom gradually expanded to encompass the wet grasslands of the Lake Upemba Depression. The Luba kings and oral traditions claimed a connection with the Iron Age Lualaba people who inhabited the Shaba area. The Lualaba people thrived due to the availability of metal deposits, especially copper, which they traded with other Central African communities through the region's rivers. The Luba people were skilled in agriculture, cultivating crops such as sorghum, millet, yams, bananas, beans, sugar cane, and ground nuts. They also engaged in fishing and herding animals like pigs and cattle. The region was rich in iron and copper deposits, which were used for crafting pottery, baskets, woven items, salt production, palm beer, and copper jewelry. Trade was a significant part of Luba society, reaching as far as the forests of Central Africa, Zimbabwe to the south, and the coast, connecting with the Indian Ocean. According to oral legends, the first king of Luba was Kongolo, also known as Rainbow. Kongolo was initially a cruel ruler until he was civilized by a hunter named Kalala Lunga, who came from the east. The hunter had relationships with two of the king's sisters, and their child, upon growing up, left Luba to find his father, who had already left the kingdom. The hunter gave the prince an army, and he returned to overthrow his cruel uncle and establish just rule in the kingdom of Luba. In some versions of the myth, Kongolo is killed by Kalala Lunga, and instead of a nephew, there are two female-led rival tribes to the west. The joining of these micro-kingdoms, either through marriage or abdication, led to the formation of the larger Luba kingdom. The story of Luba's founding king reflects the influence of regional trade and the spread of ideas that accompanied it. It may also relate to the Bantu migration, which spread advanced language and technology from southwest Africa across the continent's interior. Luba royal power was symbolized by double iron bells, demonstrating their skill in iron working and metal soldering. These bells were produced throughout Central Africa and indicated the exchange of ideas in the region. In terms of governance, the Luba lineage was initially matrilineal until around 1500 CE when they adopted patrilineal customs. The kings of Luba emerged from landowners, particularly influential ones who were also priests of the land spirits. Through the acquisition of neighboring lands and the joining of small chiefdoms through marriages, these ruling figures formed a nobility with a king at the helm. The king served both as rulers and religious figures, revered as sacred individuals. As agriculture and trade prospered, surplus produce allowed the wealthier citizens to free themselves from labor and focus on building state governance systems. Land was acquired from weaker neighbors, tribute was collected from conquered tribes, and slaves were captured to increase agricultural production and free more Lubans from labor. This marked the birth of the Kingdom of Luba. Religion played a significant role in Luba society, with priests promising success in agriculture and fertility. Magic, divination, and reverence for ancestors and local spirits were widespread. Kings and other figures of authority were held in high regard, and secret societies with exclusive rites and rituals further bolstered their power. In the 18th century CE, the Kingdom of Luba experienced a period of expansion under the leadership of King Kadilo, who reigned from around 1700 CE. The kingdom gradually absorbed neighboring territories, including the Kingdom of Kikanja in the south, the Kingdom of Kalangwe in the west, and several tribes in the southeast. However, as the kingdom expanded, some people chose to leave the region to maintain their independence, leading to the formation of the Shila state near Lake Mweru. The Luba kingdom's success was such that people in the surrounding regions of central and eastern Zambia and Malawi claimed their own kings were descended from the Luba lineage. One neighboring kingdom that was particularly influenced by Luba traditions and symbols was the Run Kingdom in Western Shaba, which was founded around 1500 CE. The two kingdoms had a significant cultural exchange. Sadly, like many African cultures, the Kingdom of Luba faced its downfall in the late 19th century CE with the arrival of European colonialists. The Belgians colonized this part of Africa in 1885 CE, establishing the Belgian Congo. The region witnessed civil wars and underwent several name changes as regimes came and went. It gained independence in 1960 CE and is now known as the Democratic Republic of the Congo.